All right, we have pulled the hoop coop propagation house into the barn where it's dry because we're having rain today. We're taking this plastic that we have laid out here. This is gonna be for the front right here. We've got plastic over there. We're gonna drape over the top. We're gonna to turn this into a mini seed starting greenhouse. We actually have a greenhouse on order, but it won't be in time. It won't be here and put up in time for our spring vegetables to get started. So this is the compromise. We're just gonna turn this into a little mini greenhouse. We're gonna put our uh, tables in here and then we can put all of our seed flats in here. And uh, that should keep it warm enough for all the seeds to germinate. And when we get that other greenhouse going, then we can do something different with his, with this and move all the seedlings over to the greenhouse. So let's go ahead and get started on putting this over. It's the end of January and I got bit by the tomato bug. Michelle and I were planning our spring garden and she opened up the Baker Creek seed catalog and she's like, I'd like to try some tomatoes this year. And she's brand new to, to tomatoes. And, uh, and she was flipping through there and she saw all the different designer tomatoes in there. And she's like, ooh, those are pretty. I would like to grow some of those. So we put some on order and we placed our order and then I was sitting at the computer and I was like, well, what actually is going on in the tomato community? What's, what's hot in the market? And uh, what flavor profiles are really popular these days? So I did a little research. I went on Etsy and I started looking at all these different seeds. Then Facebook recommended a group to me, Tomato Lovers and Collective. And whenever I went on that site, I fell in love with how they were running things. You can get on there and it's just a good, wholesome uh, Facebook group where everybody is nice and friendly and all they're doing is trading seeds and sharing the love and passion of tomatoes. And so I got on one of the games they were playing where some people would offer up these little collections of seeds, you know, four or five at a time, and then you could take forever stamps and then send them however many de designated tomato stamps for those seeds, and then they would mail you the seeds. And it'd be like five to 10 seeds, so you're not gonna get a big full pack. 
but it is a great way to expand a tomato collection. And then <clears throat> one thing led to the other. I got on YouTube and I looked at all these different varieties that were out there. And I guess I've just been out of the, the tomato loop for a, a few years. And the expanse of tomatoes that are out there to these days are just mind blowing. So I placed another order, I did some trades. And today I am up to a hundred varieties that, have, that are now collected. And <clears throat> so what we have here is I've ordered some trays and I've ordered some two and a half inch pots. And I bought a bulk uh, supply of two yards of compost and two um, bales of peat moss. And we're going to start um, we're going to start planting some of these seeds out today and get these started. Now we attend a couple of homesteading groups, Keepers of the Old Ways, which is held currently down in Dothan, Alabama. And so we're going to be taking some of these plants out there to sell. And there are some local markets around here that we're going to take these plants to and sell also. While we're on the subject of Keepers of the Old Ways, why don't you guys plan on coming out to Dothan, Alabama, um, middle of April, and there's a lot of knowledge that are shared at that event. I'm going to have some of these tomato plants for sale. I'm also going to have some of our apple trees that I grafted last year. And I'm going to also be teaching a grafting class. And I'm going to have some, some scion from pears and apples where you can graft your own tree. And then you get to try to take that tree on home with you once you're done. So if you're available, make plans and come out and visit with us. Now, let's talk about some of the varieties that I've acquired and that we're going to go ahead and start getting planted today. I had to make a list and one, if you're going to join one of these seed trading groups, I found out real quick that you need to have a trading list to send to other people so they know what you have and what you want and you know, so you can make your trades. So everything that you see here that's in yellow are trades that I've made and the seeds haven't come in yet. So I'm still expecting a lot of seeds to come in uh, so that we can finish our spring planting. <clears throat> now, just some of the varieties that we're gonna be planting is, um, I'm gonna go through some of the seed packs I have here. First off, the very first trade I ever made on Tomato Lovers uh, Collective was from Miss Lena Lovingood, and there were two Ukrainian varieties of tomatoes. I happen to have a co-worker that sits right beside me, and his grandparents on both sides are from Ukraine. So I thought, well, that would be neat that if I had um, some Ukrainian-type tomatoes that I could gift him a plant over that he could grow out and uh, raise with his kids. But Red Magician and Red Mustafa are the two varieties that I have there. And thank you, Miss uh, Lena Lovingood, for your trade. Comes with a little note written on the front there. And I found out real quick that it's kind of customary to send a little uh, handwritten thank you card or something like that, telling people thank you for the trade. So I've started doing that now whenever I send stamps or seeds for these trays, I try to throw a little note in there with it also. Um, some of the others that I've traded for is Aunt Ruby's um, German Green. So that's a green when it's ripe. And I think I got 10 seeds in there. I got pineapple. There we go. Pineapple. Striped German. Solar Flare, and that's a real neat one. Uh, it's another striped variety. Here's one that has uh, really good reviews on being a really tasty tomato, and that's Copia. So I got a few seeds of Copia. Um, now, the ones I ordered from Baker Creek, I had Dr. Witchie's Yellow. One I got off of Etsy is Husky. It's just a Husky tomato. I have a guy that I go to church with, he said he likes husky just to snack on. I was like, well, I'm going to get some of those seeds. We'll grow some of those out. Now, from Tim's Tomatoes, I've placed three orders with Tim's Tomatoes. Uh, two of them haven't come in yet. 
but this was the very first purchase that I got from him. And the free gift that he included was Sunset's Red Horizon Tomato. So that was a free gift. There's the seeds in the back of the package there. And then I ordered from him Hill, uh, Hillbilly's Potato Leaf. And I also ordered Cherry Falls Tomato. Now we're gonna be putting these in hanging baskets. When I lived up in Maine, and I was probably 23, 24 years old, the local hardware store had a uh, hanging cherry basket. It was probably the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in a hanging basket. And it was just loaded out with all these cherry tomatoes. And it was beautifully shaped. I think I paid like 10 bucks for it. And I'd like to recreate that again. So here's one that I traded for. There's a thank you card in there. Uh, this one is Fat Frog, and it's a micro dwarf tomato. Micro dwarf tomatoes, the whole plant gets less than a foot tall, and it has these real nice little uh, cherry type tomatoes in there. So I'm looking forward to the micro tomatoes and just growing those out in the house and having them all year long, especially in the winter time when you don't have fresh tomatoes growing out in your garden, you can have a little fresh tomato growing on your windowsill or under a grow light or something. So I'm looking forward to that. All right, so another one from Baker Creek, White Current. Now look at this one. This was Alice's Dream. That's the one that got Michelle right there. When she saw all of those uh, lovely striped tomatoes on there, she fell in love with that one. And that's probably the tomato that started us down this rabbit hole. Kellogg's Breakfast, nice big beef steak tomato. I grew this one last year and I really liked it. Paul Robeson, and it's a dark uh, purple type of uh, a tomato. Real good smoky flavor. Yellow brandy wine, another big large beef steak. I've grown this one for several years and these seeds are several years old, but they're still viable seeds. Sart re release. Black Beauty is okay. It's a beautiful tomato, but it's really just not that great in flavor. It's okay. And then this was a, the free gift last year from Baker Creek and that's a spoon tomato, real small tomatoes. Last year I ordered red snapper and those are pelleted. And I think I have about 30 or 40 seed in that package. And last year I went with uh, the hybrid types because here in the deep south of Alabama, we have a problem with tomato blight. And some of these improved um, varieties that are disease resistant do a lot better down here. And uh, so that's also the reason that I went with Dixie Red last year. And I went with Amelia last year. And these have a high tolerance towards disease. Uh, they're very disease resistant. And there's Bella Rosa. Um, I heard about orange banana as a paste tomato a couple of years ago, and so I ordered that one. So I'm gonna be growing that one again this year. I grew it as a fall tomato, and my freeze was hitting this year right at the same time those tomatoes were turning ripe, and I just don't think they got the full flavor. So, but I generally like to, to start a late season tomato and then harvest right up until first frost, but it really didn't work out for that variety last year. Triple crop, which is a tall tree tomato. And I also last year decided that I was gonna try grafting some tomatoes, so I bought a rootstock. And uh, I got a few seeds of that. I'm gonna try that this year, see if I can get grafting to tape. And here's some seeds I have saved from years in the past. Mr. Stripey, I just threw them in a little bag there. So Mr. Stripey's going back in the garden this year. Uh, giant Belgium from years past. Brad's Atomic Grape from years past. And here's some saved seeds of Cherokee Purple from 
when I saved those a couple of years ago. My friend David the Good, his daughter sells Everglades tomatoes. And I swear that plant crawled all over my garden last year and had thousands of these little tiny cherry tomatoes. And I would just pick the whole cluster and walk around looking at my orchard and just eating those little tomatoes. I really like those. And those are super disease resistant. They do really well. They just power right through the summer heat down here. I can't say enough good things about the Everglades tomatoes. I was surprised at how resilient that variety is. And now I heard that they have a yellow variety out and I may try growing that one also. Uh, a few years ago, when I first heard about the micro tomatoes, I placed an order and I got a few seeds of micro tomatoes. It doesn't have a variety name on there. I've tried going back and looking, see if I could find it, but it just says micro tomato. So I've got some started. They're about this high in the house. We're gonna see what those turn out to be. Um, Seed Savers Exchange sent a free package of Cherry Roma a couple of years ago. So I still got those. Jelly Bean Hybrid. Now, when I first ordered my seeds this year, I knew that I wanted these certain type of watermelon seeds. And while I was there, I went ahead and ordered some tomatoes since I was kind of getting into this whole tomato thing. And so I picked up a very disease resistant variety, Lemon Boy Hybrid um, Plus. So that is the disease resistant version of regular Lemon Boy. I got Pink Berkeley tie-dye, which is a really beautiful tomato. And uh, we're gonna be planting quite a bit of those. So I'm gonna have pl plenty of those for sale this year. Uh, a paste tomato that's um, disease resistant, Granadero here. And I have a greenhouse coming in about two or three weeks and we're gonna grow tomatoes in it. So I went ahead and ordered a greenhouse variety called Hot Streak. Those are really expensive, but you only need a few of them to grow some good tomatoes in a, uh, in a high tunnel. All right, moving on. All right, let's talk about potting up and the trays that we decided to go with. I decided to go with individual pots because originally I thought if I'm going to sell tomatoes, I'll just buy the six pack tray that you normally get with little six tomatoes in it. And I was just gonna pick out a better boy or celebrity or something like that and just sell those. But now that I've fallen down the rabbit hole, um, I know that people aren't gonna to wanna to buy six packs of just these specialty varieties. So I decided to buy the 32 pack tray and the uh, two and a half inch pots that are three and a half inches deep. I thought that was a really good size for a tomato transplant to go in. So we did that. Now I went down to Pensacola where they have a composting program and I bought two yards out of the back, you know, put it in the back of my truck and brought it home of this compost. But this is the nice dick, um, <coughs> thick, dark compost that they sell down there. And I've always had really good luck with it. I've not bought any in two years, so this is my first time having it in two years. But, um, to start my seeds out with, I, would knew I, I knew that I would need a seed mix. So I bought a whole cube at Lowe's of peat moss. And this is all like 20 bucks for this whole big cube. And I did all those trays over there, which is about 300 trays. And uh, I barely even put a dent in this package here. So I've got a lot left and I got a whole nother cube over there. But I also got some other things to do. I'm gonna start some fig cuttings and some angel trumpet cuttings and stuff like that. All right, so the way I decided to fill my trays is I bring my tray over here next to my wagon that's got my compost and got my peat moss here. And I've got my potting bench here, which has a bin below it to catch any potting soil that doesn't go in the pots that falls below. They fall right into this bin, so that catches it and it doesn't go to waste. <coughs> so. I just give me a scoop of this compost like this, come over to two pots and put that down in two pots. And so I've got about this much compost right in the bottom there. And it serves two purposes. One is a filler and it's going to give those roots a little nutrition 
to uh, go off of once the roots get down that. But the rest of this is going to get filled up with just peat moss. And peat moss isn't going to have any of those um, funguses in there that's going to cause dampening off and stuff like that. So it's a really sterile mix. And I'll just indent, drop my seed right in there, and then drop my name tag. So that's how we're doing our trays. Just a little compost and then a little peat moss right on top. Okay, so the way I decided that I'm gonna pot my tomatoes and get them started is I organized my trading sheet here as my seeding, my seed list also. But right in the corner, I wrote a number one all the way through 100 varieties that I have. <clears throat> and then on my tag, if my tags are facing one way where the customer's reading Alice's Dream, I can quickly reference number one on my list <clears throat> that corresponds to that variety. So <clears throat> I went ahead while I was inside and I had nothing else to do and started writing up all my plant tags. Now last year I bought a whole box of these plant tags on Amazon. I think it was a thousand tags for like 10 bucks or something like that. Really cheap. So I went ahead and I knew that I was going to be doing a lot more propagating. I went ahead and put another thousand on order, but don't tell my wife. Um, <clears throat> so Alice's Dream, when I bought the package, it said on the package, minimum 25 seeds. So I decided <clears throat> I'm not going to plant every single seed of everything that I have. I'll always try to keep something in reserve. Maybe for trading or maybe if I have a failed crop, I can have something I can go back to and just get those genetics back. So out of 25 seeds, I've designated that I'm going to do 20 plant starts. And we'll just barely scratch the surface about an eighth of an inch deep, right in the center. And we'll just go ahead and do this whole tray. Had my cat jump here, <coughs> had my cat jump here on the bench a while ago and stuck his paw in the tray and then lay down. I was like, cat, if these had been growing tomatoes up here, you and I would have problems right now. So the cat was quickly evicted from the table to never return. All right, guys, I've got a lot of planting ahead of me. Uh, today, I probably have 300 tomato seeds that I'm going to drop in these trays. I hope you enjoyed this little quick video of what we're going to be planting this year and offering up for sale. I'm going to be planting one or two of these of each variety out in my garden out here in my in-ground garden and we're going to be putting down irrigation, mulching those beds and we're going to take really good care of them and we're excited for this year because man these tomatoes are going to be something else. We're going to do some tasting videos of everything that we got going and I'm going to keep furthering my seed collection, hopefully through some trades to where I'm not buying those packages of seeds just to uh, try those varieties. If you're interested in getting into tomatoes, I, urge, I strongly urge you to go over to Facebook and get on Tomato Lovers Collective. Check them out. Do some trades. If you don't have tomato seeds that you can trade, there are little games that whenever they are played, Usually once a week, this game is played where you can get forever stamps and you can trade however many forever stamps for the seeds that they are putting up for trades. And it'll all be listed right there in the description. You can read all about it, so don't be scared. Uh, I encourage you to go over there and visit everybody. It's a wonderful group, and uh, I love it. Remember, keep growing, keep building, and always keep adventuring. And together, we're Flamington Famous. We'll see you next time.